Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and uh, back to our TypeScript series. In today's uh, session, we are going to talk about basic conditional operators with if-else conditions and ternary operator also we have, we will see. So what we will do that we will create one uh, file here. Let's see, simple, I'm writing if-else.ts file. So if else conditions are exactly like in JavaScript, same thing, same similar kind of code you can write uh, here also as such, there is no uh, difference in terms of syntax and everything. So for example, let's see if I'm writing one if, and then here I'm writing a uh, value true here. It means if the condition is satisfied, then you, uh, it will come inside the if part, otherwise it won't. So for example, if I'm writing something here, let's see if I'm passing pass here, it will be printing pass. Right, so when I compile this code, let's compile it. <clears throat> and uh, after compilation, if uh, you can see here that uh, one JS file got created. So in the JavaScript also, similar kind of code will be created. Same thing in the TypeScript. So syntax wise is exactly same. And when I run this, so let's quickly run it. Sorry, let me just run it again with the dot JS and then run it, you can see that pass is coming here similar way if you really want to write an else also that also you can simple uh, right here let's see if else is a fail here like that right so why it is coming in the gray color see this is giving a gray color warning that is called unreachable code detected because you're already passing you are already passing a true here so what is the it does not make any sense to write the else here that's why it's coming as a unreachable code you can say it here. So what we can do instead of maintaining this, we can create a variable. So let's creating a variable, which is a flag variable. And I'm deciding its type also, which is a Boolean type. And I'm giving its value, which is a true here. And this flag variable, I'm going to write it here. Now you can say it's not coming in the gray color or unreachable code here. So if this entire condition is getting satisfied this flag is getting true then only it will come inside this otherwise it will come inside the else part so this entire if else logic is actually dependent on the flag variable perfect so if you quickly compile it and then run it again so compilation and then run it again you are getting pass here simple now can we do the comparison with other conditional operators of course we can do that so for example, let's see if I'm writing, defining some variable, which is X variable and looks, let's see, it's a kind of number and I'm writing number is equal to 10. And at the same time, I can define another variable also. Let's see Y, which is equal to 20. So see this X is also 10 and Y is 20. So for both, it will take number. If you really want to define, let's see Y colon number also, you can define it like this also. Okay, so you don't need to create let variable once again. With the single let, you can define or you can create two variables here. Now, if I'm writing a simple condition that if x is greater than y, then in that case, do something. So let's see if I'm just printing here that uh, here I'm printing that <coughs> x is greater than y. Else, again printed, then I'm writing that uh, y is greater than x. That's it. So obviously that if you see it here, the only difference is that we are explicitly giving the type of the x, the type of the variable, which is number. And then I'm just doing a comparison here. So obviously that x is not greater than y. In that case, what exactly it will give you, it will go to the else part and it will print y is greater than x here. Right. So let's compile it once again. So I'm compiling it and then run it with the node. So let's quickly uh, run it. So here you can say it's printing Y as greater than X. So any conditional operators that you want to write, you can write less than, you can write greater than, you can write less than equal to, greater than equal to, or equal to, equal to, equal to also, you can write it for the comparison. You can write not equal to also like this. So I'm not covering all these operators. It's very well understood. We have already covered in the JavaScript and then if you really want to practice, you can practice it accordingly here. But can we write like, let's see, uh, if else, if conditions, can we write in this particular format, something like this, if then else, 
if that I'm writing it here like that. Yes, of course, we can write it here. So let's take one practical example. For example, let's see I'm creating three variables. Variable A, which is a number, which is equal to, let's see, 100. Another variable B, and this is also a number, which is 200. Then I'm creating one more variable C. This is also a number, which is equal to 300. So three numbers are there. And you have to write a logic that you have to find out the greatest number. Make sure these three numbers are the different numbers, not the same numbers. And numbers could be anything. So here you can see that C is the greatest, which is 300. So you have to tell me you how will you find which one is the greatest number. If I'm writing A is equal to, let's see, 500, then A is the greatest number. So it should print A is the greatest number, right? So how will you write the logic for that? So see, I'm writing one if condition here. If first what I'll do, I'll compare A with grade greater than B. And then I'm writing and and operator. And then I'm checking A is greater than C or not. So I'm comparing A with B and C. If see this carefully, if A is greater than B and C, then of course A is the greatest number. So here I'm writing that yes, that A is greatest. That's it. Then after that, I'm writing another else and with else put a space and then you write one if condition. Then I'm writing if B is greater than C, then simple print B is the greatest number here. So let's see, I'm printing here that B is greatest. But you must be thinking that why I'm not comparing B with A? Because we don't need to do that because B and A comparison is already done. Right. So I'm just checking that if A is greater than B and C, then A is greatest. If this condition is not satisfied, you go to the second one. And if B is greater than C, then you check B is the greatest. If nothing is getting satisfied, then finally you come inside the else part. And then you print that whatever the last number that is C is the greatest. Right. So let's see this one by one. So I'll write it here in the comments form that a hundred is greater than b no so this is false and and a greater than c hundred is greater than three three hundred false so how exactly it will be calculated see i am using and and operator two times and operator i have written so this is also called a short circuit operator what is the meaning of short circuit operator it means when you have already calculated the first condition a greater than b a greater than B says it's false. So immediately this condition will be short, short circuit. Short circuit means you don't need to check the other condition. No need to check the right hand side condition. If your left hand side condition is already not satisfied, no need to check it here. So that's what end end operator is also called a short circuit operator. But if I'm writing only single end, then it will go and check both the conditions. So here we have to write, let's see double end here and then if first condition is not satisfied, no need to proceed further. So this condition is not satisfied. Then it will come here. B greater than C, 200 greater than 300. No. So I'm writing a false here. So what is left? Nothing. Simple else and print C is the greatest number. So let's run it and let's see, is it really working or not? That C is the really greatest number it's printing. Yes, 300 is here. But let's see in my code when I compile it. And... Uh, to run it again and here you can see that yes c is the greatest number which is actually a greatest number now i'm making it let's see y is the 500 here so sorry b is the 500 here so b means it should print b is the greatest number so again check 100 greater than b false no need to proceed further so immediately short circuit will happen it will go to the next condition b is greater than c yes 500 greater than 300 condition is true so it will come here. B is the greatest. No need to come here. So in that case, what exactly it will print? Let's compile it again. And then let's run it again. Here you can see that now it's giving me B is the greatest here. Simple. Now what I'll do, I'll make this time A is equal to, let's see, 600. Then again, it will check A is greater than B. Yes. Now this is true. Short circuit will not happen. Now it will go and check the second condition. The Right hand side condition A is greater than C, 600 greater than 300, yes. So if both the conditions are satisfied, then only it will come and it will allow you to come inside the if condition. So now it will print A is the 
greatest it will not come inside the else if or else here simple so let's uh, compile it again and then run it again so yeah it's printing a is the greatest here but now i'll do one thing let's see b i'm making it 700 right or uh, let's see this guy is uh, 800 again it will go and check a greater than b yes true check the second condition a greater than c 800 is greater than 300 let's see i'm making it this guy uh, 111 or 1000 here for example so a is greater than c no this is false now the short circuit will happen and remember true and and false is equal to false only so in that case it will not come inside the if condition so remember whenever you are using and and operator both the conditions or all the conditions should be satisfied then only it will come inside the if condition otherwise it won't come so it will not come here because of this condition got false now b greater than c 700 greater than c no so again this is false then what is the left thing the only left part is c is greatest so in that case yes thousand is the greatest number so c is the greatest number will be printed so let's run it again now you can say c is the greatest so you can see that yes my logic is actually absolutely working fine here simple so yes you can write if else conditions you can write any nested if and all those things anything that you want to design the logic accordingly you can write it here okay now <clears throat> we will talk about one more operator that is called ternary operator i'm talking about this one ternary operator what does it mean it's very uh, handy and uh, good thing is we can reduce the code like anything for example let's see i'm creating one variable here and i is the variable which is actually a number so here i'm writing let's see one number which is equal to 100 and another variable i'm writing let's see let uh, j colon number which is equal to let's see 20 here like this okay so two numbers which is i have taken now i'm writing one expression here so i'm writing this if i is greater than j <clears throat> right if the condition is satisfied if i is greater than j then what do you want so i'm asking a question so i'm putting a question mark here then it will have two parts part one and part two so part one i'm writing let's see i'm printing that let's print something here i'm writing here that i is greater than j okay that is the first part and the second part after the after this colon that i'm writing that again console dot log and now i'm writing j is greater than i right so this is let's see a simple expression that i have written so in that case what will be the output so here you can see that i 100 and j is 20 so it will check this condition i greater than j 100 is greater than j yes condition is true if it is true then go to the part number one it means i is greater than j will be printed on the console if it is false then you have to go to the part number two okay remember like this so let me just clear the console and let's compile it and let's see what is the output of it so let's run it now you can say i is greater than j now i'm making this j is actually 200 again go and check the condition i is greater than j no 100 is not greater than 200 so it will become false so if it is false then go to where don't go to the part number one go to part number two here so it will go to the part number two which is j is greater than i in that case so when you run it again first you have to compile it and then run it again and now you can say j is greater than i which is getting printed on the console right so this is how the ternary operator works let's take one example with the ternary operator <clears throat> for example uh, i'm creating one variable which is let's see a browser variable and this browser variable is a kind of a string and a string browser i'm writing let's see here in double code i'm writing a chrome browser okay and uh, here what i'm writing here i'm maintaining one i'm using this particular browser and i'm checking that if it is actually 
let's see browser is equal to equal to a uh, chrome something like this so this is the condition that i have written which is representing a boolean if it is chrome then what do you want then again a question mark if it is chrome then do what then i'm writing that okay we have to launch let's see chrome browser or we have to open the uh, a specific chrome browser right so like this also we can write it so here i'm writing that uh, again i'm printing console dot lock and uh, i'm just writing that launch chrome okay if it is not condition is not satisfied it means if browser let's see is not equal to chrome let's see firefox then you go to the part number two and in part number two again you are checking another thing here that once again you are checking if browser is equal to equal to equal to if your browser is equal to firefox then again i'm putting a question mark right and then if it is satisfied then i'm printing launch firefox so here i'm writing okay launch firefox if it is not firefox then do what <clears throat> then i'm simple writing another console.log and uh, here i'm writing one message here that please pass the right browser okay just try to understand slightly long syntax that i have written okay so here you can see that browser equal to chrome so first it will go and check browser equal to chrome yes condition is satisfied so it will go and check what is the part number one so this is the part number one it will just print launch chrome and that's it hmm? so let me just clear it let me just compile it and run it again so here you can say that launch google chrome now i'm passing firefox here if i'm passing firefox again it will go and check browser equal to firefox no it means go to the part number two so again it will check browser equal to equal to firefox yes then what do you want after that after that go to the part number one so launch firefox will be printed on the console so let's run it again compile it and then run it so now you can say launch firefox but let's see if i'm writing your browser name is edge browser and we are just handling only two browser chrome and the firefox so in that case what will happen see this in that case it will go and check browser equal to chrome no go to the second part browser equal to firefox no go to the part number two and print please pass the right browser right so simple cross browser handling with the ternary operator that we have written here that again compile it and run it again so now it's saying please pass the right browser although you can write the same thing with the if else conditions also but if you really want to apply with the ternary operator that also we can simply use it here so i hope this is clear simple so that's all for this video this is a very simple example of if else conditions else if conditions and the ternary operator please go through it and there is no rocket science there is no like a specific syntax that we have to use it for the typescript the same syntax that we were using in the javascript same thing will happen in the typescript also that's all for this video guys